Welcome back and many thanks indeed for your time. Thanks to Grandpa for my face masks. These days, uh, face masks are in vogue. You have to either wear them. It's not an article of fashion. It's for your own protection. The Ghanaian Times this morning says, COVID-19 Zoom line disinfects Kutoka three other airports and confirmed COVID-19 cases now 1,675, 16 die, 188 recover. Dialogue with employees over COVID-19. National Tripartite Committee urges employees. Integrated customs management system takes off to become mandatory by June, according to the Ghana Revenue Authority. The banner headline says COVID-19 combat KNUST and other develop rapid diagnostic test kits to support testing regime in Ghana. Look at the back page. We said domestic flights to resume on Saturday. Aviation Minister. Uh, that GRA story is on page 20. And a daily guide this morning says, Kill me if you have powers. Ken mocks Obinim. I'm sure you've seen the debacle going back and forth, the mockery and all of that. Mahama projects in progress. And um, the health minister says they have plans. So it's, it cannot be true that the projects that were started by the Eswa Mahama government has been left unattended to. Zoom line disinfects Kutuka. COVID-19 kills 16 cases, hit 1,671. And, um, well, the daily graphic, address potential food insecurity, NDPC urges government. Tripartite Committee agrees on steps to deal with COVID-19 impact and KIA prepares to resume domestic flights. Use COVID-19 to build local industries. Dr. Sipayanki is urging all of us uh, to look within, uh, maybe in line with the president's um, Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. KIA prepares to resume domestic flights. That's on the back page. And government taking steps to promote agro-processing, according to the agri minister. On the front page of the BNFT, which is our very final one today, is agri slips again despite planting for food and jobs intervention. First quarter mobile money interoperability up by over 350%. And that was to get ready to recommence operations on the back page. Uh, chemical supports COVID-19 fund and Noguchi. My guest this morning is Mr. Alex Sebefia, who is the head of international relations for the NDC. He's also a member of the uh, communications team and a member of the COVID-19 team set up by the NDC. Also, lawyer Yaobua Bia Samoa is the director of communications for the NDC. Gentlemen, good morning and welcome. Many thanks to you for your time. How, how are we doing? Quite well. Okay. By his grace, we're fine. You're fine. May I get the Ghanaian Times, please? I don't know uh, who has it. Wait. Thank you. That's the Ghanaian Times. Should be fine. Thank you, sir. You can join us always uh, with your thoughts and comments. 020 216 That's 020 216 That's our WhatsApp line. Or you go onto any of our social media pages and we'll be happy to uh, receive your comments and share them with the rest of the wonderful world. Now, the integrated management system uh, takes off to be mandatory by June, according to the GRA. The Ghana Revenue Authority has stated that effective June 1, 2020, all transactions related to the port, uh, import and export of goods uh, will be in the country through the, the ICOMs. Now, the move, according to the GRA, was aimed at coordinating all import and export activities at the ports on a single platform to reduce costs in clearing the export of goods. Now, like yesterday, the GRA in a press statement uh, issued in Accra on Monday, or two days ago, signed by the Acting Commissioner General, Amisha Dai Usu Amwa, and copied to the Ghanaian Times, however, said between April 28, 2020, and May 31, 2020, transactions in respect of import and export manifest can be processed through either ICOMS or the Ghana Customs Management uh, System for Tema Port as well as all other entry points. All of that is happening. And then yesterday, we also chanced on a notice from the Ghana Revenue Authority. This, is, this has come to the notice of management of the Ghana Revenue Authority that customs house agents declare, uh, declarants are facing some challenges processing their customs documents on the integrated customs management systems. Management of GRA as part of efforts to resolve these challenges is having consultations with management of GCNet um, for the restoration of the GCNet GCMS services. The discussions are almost concluded and management is hopeful that the GCNet GCMS 
will be operational by Wednesday, 29th April 2020, which is today. The management regrets any inconvenience with the disruption in services has caused all our cherished shareholders. We use this opportunity to assure all stakeholders of our continuous support and thank you for the support and cooperation and assistance, Commissioner General. But Mr. Wabia Samuel, let me start with you. The conversation has been as to whether or not GCNet has outlived its usefulness, which is why we're bringing in Unipass. And now the freight forwarders in Takradi, for example, are complaining that there have been a lot of issues. I mean, even before this started, they, it's been fraught with a lot of issues back and forth. Now we're reading from GRA that, well, we are back in talks with GCNet to see if, literally, as Franklin Kuja says, GRA is on his knees begging GCNet to come back. Is that what is happening? From what you read, mm. I don't believe that is what is happening in the long term. My understanding is that certain challenges have been met, mm. but that 1st June, the Unipass system mm. were fully operational. So in that sense, until GRA is able to tell us plainly that it has cancelled its intended movement to mm. Unipass and that it is restoring GCNet in full, we can't say that they're on their knees begging mm. to, to, to cancel it, as it were. Um, my understanding of what is happening is that there have been substantial challenges and therefore they're probably stepping back to ensure that they're able to put in place all the necessary... Uh, um, they need to tweak the system, mm. literally, as it were. And in the interim, it's, it's a daily process. Mm. Clearing of goods is a daily process. So it's not surprising that an old system that you use mm. can be of help in a point, at a point where you had intended to fully deploy mm. on another system and you need to step back and tweak. So I don't believe that uh, it's being cancelled mm. in its entirety. The, the, the GCNet, for example, insists that whatever you are asking Unipass to come and do, we already do, along with West Blue Skies. And so the port, we all know, is one of our biggest uh, points of revenue. GCNet says that, look, you are not bringing anything new by bringing Unipass. Why do you want to change a winning team, they're asking? Frankly, this argument has been hashed and rehashed. And I think the bottom line is that at the end of the day, the government and the customs uh, uh, administration officials have mm. decided that they are going to use the Unipass. Mm. So uh, going back to the argument about whether... Uh, they, they, they are fingering the senior minister in, in all of this. They say this is, this is the machination see, of the senior you minister. See, you see... The, the difficulty with public policy in this country where underhand dealings have to always be assigned to somebody, then you're assuming that one person in the name of the foreign minister can move the entire government and bureaucracy in the personal direction mm. against the dictates of cabinet or against the entire bureaucratic administration, ad, administration of customs. It is too far-fetched. Mm. It is too far-fetched. If the senior minister happens to be the point person, leading a negotiation or a change management process. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that it is his personal agenda mm -hmm. that is being run through the government. Mm -hmm. In any event, what then does West Blue add to GCNet? There were also complaints at the time mm -hmm. that West Blue was superfluous because GCNet was already doing what West Blue was expected to do. Mm -hmm. And yet West Blue was deployed. And some sort of untidy compromise uh, was put in place where both were running. And if but it was profitable, the GCNet is arguing that bringing on West Blue made it profitable. Is it about profit? Is it not? I think it's about efficiency and capacity to have run a seamless process that mm. makes import and export administration more efficient mm. in terms of better coordination, in terms of reducing downtime, in terms of ensuring that you don't have too many processes mm. to go through, in terms of eliminating man contact hours mm, mm. And, and, and having a throughput that, that takes advantage of the entire technical value chain possible mm. across the world. Mm. I think that's what this is all about, right. that you're able to have a seamless system. But there's also money at the, at the tail end. But when you work, you deserve to be paid. To the extent, to the extent that most of government revenue mm -hmm. comes through the ports, right. especially Tema. <laughs> of course, <laughs> there's a setting profit angle to it. But the essence, the core mm. of running a customs operation is not the profits to the operators of the system. <laughs> it is 
the needs of the users, mm -hmm. the service providers, the, the, the people who need to bring in material. It's not, it's not an end in itself to, to export, uh, import stuff right. through a port. Mm -hmm. You are bringing it in. So the port is a facilitatory process. Right. So that you get what you need into the system and then your business begins. But where the freight forwarders are kicking against this deal with Unipass and Ghana Link, the government should be listening to them because they are the ones who are working there, don't you think? It, it is been, and I believe over the past year, the Deputy uh, uh, Minister mm. of Finance mm. has been literally the implementing point man on mm. this. Mm. And at no point has it been said that freight forwarders have not been engaged mm. on the transition to Unipass. I don't think that is the case. Change management is difficult. Moving out of your comfort zone may be difficult. And it is clear that if you have a one-window system, you may actually end up with areas where you may not need certain services. This is they had an end-to-end. What you're asking Unipass to bring, yes. they have it all. In fact, yeah. they had to invest in, in software upgrade and all of that. And presently, Unipass is actually using their software, which is why they are in court yeah. for plagiarism and all of that. Yes, but those are the issues that are corollary to the change. Mm. But change there is. Okay. And that change is in progress. How it pans out uh, depends on how it's implemented and managed okay. and how the stakeholders adapt. Okay. It's like a, <laughs> a structural transition, mm -hmm. for example, in private transport services, taxis. Mm -hmm. You have traditional taxis standing at a rank, waiting for five people to sit down before they move. And then in comes, uh, 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 what do you call it, app. Right, app the online, online taxi online, And an online taxi can come and pick you up by yourself. It's faster, it's cheaper, it's simpler. And then there's one sitting there at the rank. Mm. They are both taxis, but there's been structural change in the industry. So somebody loses out. Mm. The, the people who are stationary at the place where the tax is, the loading boys, mm -hmm. the, you know, all the other people whose economy, including even businesses who do little petty things, mm -hmm. sell food and sell hankies for an hour, who are dependent on the traffic through the static mm -hmm. terminal. Mm -hmm. They all lose out right. because now you have a structure change where the, the app discards all of that but, but and but comes straight to you. I so hear you, I hear you, but GCNet, finally, GCNet says that, look, the structural change that you're trying to bring, and maybe I, I was be sounding like a broken record, mm. we have it all. But if you insist that you will cancel that, our contract is not over. And so $300 million is what the state will be losing. Is that not too much to be losing for just one contract that we may be contracting at 40 million US dollars? That's what I'm saying, that those arguments have been made. And I am not in a position to go back mm. and make them or unmake them. I think those arguments have been made at length. Okay. There have been intense discussions in the industry associated with imports. Mm -hmm. This is a very heavy import-dependent country. Mm -hmm. And over the years, many, many uh, uh, um, institutions, private sector and public, mm -hmm. have built their corporate lives around the import regime. Okay. So, so you cannot make a change mm -hmm. without engaging a vast array of, of institutions. I get so you. all these things are in the pipeline and are being done. And I believe that at the end of the day, it is a question of policy, mm. the question of what best suits us in terms of end-to-end, -end, one window, single. We've been talking about single window this is for a very long time. Right. Okay. So that if we can get one system mm. that is end-to-end, -end, that eliminates excessive human touch, mm. that is able to track goods through and reduces the number of agencies who have a direct interest and essentially makes you feel comfortable that mm. your stuff that you are imported is coming in at less cost to you because it's an input it's not a final product okay then we should be comfortable thank you uh, Mrs. Well, let me bring you in gc Knight has been um, touting his experience and he says that look we have worked with government spanning um, the last days of president rollins when it was mooted through president kofo president mills president mahama why do you want to change a winning team with a team Unipass, as they call it, that has no track record, that is not ISO certified, that does not have what it takes to do what we have been doing over the years for more than 20 years. They say they see a monkey hand in the dark, which feels like a human hand. Do you agree? First of all, good morning to your viewers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, 
can I say that I agree with what the freight forwarders are saying, mm -hmm. and how, which is what actually GCNet is also saying. And I can understand why my colleague wouldn't want to go into the history because it, he says the decision has been made. But it's important to a certain extent mm -hmm. in that if there were not warnings in advance about the inability of Unipass to deliver a better service mm -hmm. than GCNet was delivering, then perhaps uh, he would be on uh, a good wicket, as we say in cricket, mm -hmm. to have said that uh, this is something that you don't have to look at the history. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. The history is they were warned. Government was warned. And in actual fact, what has happened is that government was on the verge of committing suicide mm -hmm. with regard to the revenues that they have to generate from the port. Mm -hmm. In fact, their legs were dangling, and had it not been for the fact that they are now using GCNet to hold them back to get the chair back, which they had kicked out, mm. uh, our revenues mm. at the time of COVID, which then become absolutely crucial, mm. uh, would have been severely affected. The history is that they were supposed, Unipass is supposed to come with a brand new system okay. that surpasses that of Uni, of uh, GCNet. GCNet right. And yet, when they began to begin operations, it appeared that they even wanted to use part of GCNet's system. GCNet said, look, we have intellectual property, don't touch our stuff. Mm -hmm. But they still went ahead. And obviously, if you're not in control of the whole system, you have problems. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when Franklin Kujo of Imani says that some amount of begging mm. has gone on, it, it, he's actually literally speaking truth. Because you have actually told the people to leave. Mm -hmm. Now, you sign a new contract with others. Put the, even the, putting the history even aside, you now have to go back to the people you said, go and ask them to come back because this, what we are doing is not working. In fact, they were moving back to a manual system. Mm. Really? Yes, the manual system started in Takradi over the last week because the actual this thing was not working, the, the system that was in place. The government insists that we were going high tech. It we're, was not working. We're doing, <laughs> so using human look, interactions yeah, and interfaces. We, we saw the, I dealt with this last Saturday. Mm. We saw, clips of people who were working at the port. And so what was happening was, areas where, and I had figures then, where you would expect Ghana to make revenues mm. of CX, excuse me to say, 10,000. Okay. They were making revenues of 3,000 because they were going to the manual system. It was allowing the issue of bribery. What was taking, what incentives, was taking away then? Let me use the word, okay. incentives. Mm. To come again, the whole idea of going paperless, mm was to stop the incentive drive. Okay. Everything comes on the computer you pay, and that's how the revenue was able to, be, come, up, right. to, to come up. Once you go back to manual, mm -hmm. people play games with the system. And that was what began to happen in the last week. And because it went manual mm -hmm. from paperless, an issue that would take half a day to clear was taking between three and nine days to clear. Mm -hmm. So it, was, it had completely failed and broken down. That's why I use the word suicide. Well, now, GRA says we are trying to right the wrongs. Come, but then they. It does not mean that you were not warned that this cannot work at this stage. The way at which you are going, it will not work. And even putting into, uh, taking into account my colleague's view of look, change and change management brings mm. issues. Yes, that is why when you have a system that is one of the largest revenue generators in the country. Mm. You must take extra care in the change management process. With the coming in of West Blue to, uh, to join right. uh, GCNet, mm -hmm. GCNet was still there. So it, there were arguments, there were issues. Since there were some untidy arrangements that were but there. You the, had to adopt them anyway. But the revenue generator was still there. So mm -hmm. your initial revenue was never going to be touched okay. because they were still working. And they have now reached some form because the same government touts that, look, in the last number of years, our revenue at the port has increased. Mm. 
So you really have to have a cogent argument for removing a good thing mm. on the basis that whatever you are bringing, as he says, using the taxi, run thing as in it, is actually much better. And you don't see this as being better? Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Why are they going back to GCNet? Every new project would have teething problems. Yes, but to the extent where you have to go back and bring the old contractor, why didn't you even have a situation where you had a negotiation where you work the two together and the, the older one phases out, say, after six months? Mm. If you don't have a good negotiating team to the extent that the issues where you have, people have agreed or the main issue, then it means that you continue, we join you, you work with us, learn what is in, put your systems in, and then you move out after six months, we continue. Seamless. Why do you have a, or that appears to be the case, situation? And these are the issues. But if you do not ha get into a good negotiating pro uh, uh, aspect, because look, at one point GCNet was saying, uh, we will give you, sh you want controlling shares, we'll give mm. you, uh, government has already 35%. Right. We'll give you another 30% for this amount. If not, pay us this amount and we'll walk away. It went to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. But to have let them go completely mm. without fully even having a test period to see how their system was going to work and whether it could sustain what was going on, for me, it, it, it's clear mm -hmm. as, as they like now, that now there's a failure. Now we're looking at a mandatory thing of May, June. This will come whether you like it or not. I'm not saying to come. Don't, don't get me wrong. That's not the point I'm making. Mm. No, I'm That's, not saying you have explained, yeah, but yes. I'm saying that where do we go from here? And I'll ask Mr. Bob me and somebody the same yes. question. Now it will come with all these issues that have been explained here yes. at this table. Yes. We know what the challenges are. Yes. We know what the advantages and disadvantages are. Yeah. And even though red flags are being raised, government says, I know what I'm doing for my people. Why did you mention the, the monkey's hand? But that appears to be human. It's because... It's an African problem. I, I agree. <laughs> but what I, the point I'm going back to is, the moment you start having issues like this, mm. then people begin to start questioning. Look, if you are bringing a superior uh, system, mm. and from day one, everything about it appears to be wrong, so that we've now moved from the greatly touted paperless system into a manual system, because that's what's the main issue is that we have now gone manual in, t in that report, completely. And this is why they have to now bring GCNet in, mm. so they can still reinstall the system and now get possibly a phased uh, handover. Mm. Is, is so GCNet not being too hard on government when he knows that, look, it, your systems are, are what we are depending on and you're, you're taking it and holding it onto it and saying that, I won't give it to you. Is not, is GC not being I don't understand. If, <laughs> if me and my brother, mm -hmm. and I'm just using us as example, right. decide that we are going to marry the same girl, mm -hmm. and <laughs> 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 and <laughs> you decide that my brother is the one, even though I have been courting her and talking to her longer than he has, mm. and everybody knows that. I'm older, I've been at it longer. Mm. And then you decide that, no, my brother should go. Do you think I'm going to take it lying down? When you want to go into the marriage and you realize that you can't pay the diary, mm. you're asking me to come and help you to pay your diary? <laughs> I will not help you. <laughs> Simply put. Simply put. Mr. <laughs> Babin he won't help you to marry the same girl he wants to marry. I wonder, I wonder whether court is my age. <laughs> <laughs> the elder must necessarily right. get married before the younger. <laughs> what do we go from up. here? Yeah. These are real challenges. Um, I mean, with the uh, the whole COVID-19 thing is displaced our yes. economy. Yes. The president has admitted it, finance minister, vice president, everybody else. Yes. What we used to get, we are not getting. Right. But the ports are working. We are raking in a lot of revenue from there. If we do it right, we will right. get a lot of it and it will cushion us. Where do we go from here? I like the phrase, if we do it right. Mm. Because you see, public policy and its implementation is the only area where it's very easy to say uh, deja vu. Had I known, we are always wiser after the fact, mm. particularly if you're not directly involved in its implementation. 
and you gave an African proverb, the monkey's hand. Mm. I also have an African proverb, which Share is that the only way mm -hmm. of learning how to cut a tree mm -hmm. is to cut it. You can't sit in the theoretically take and ask, uh, ask, swing it, and all that. Get out there and cut the tree down. But just mm. make sure you're not standing they where the tree falls. <laughs> 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 Because there's an art form in cutting the tree. <laughs> you will never get to know that art form well until well, you practice. Sometimes people die because they don't know. Mm -hmm. you know so, 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 yes, to the extent that GCNet mm -hmm. is being asked, dependent on this letter mm -hmm. that you have seen, mm -hmm. I haven't seen the letter yet. I don't have a, a, a copy of it. Asking okay. whether, mm -hmm. yes, originating from GRE oh, or is, not. It is it from is. GRE. Right. Right. So, to that extent. And yet, at the same time, we have a firm assurance from GRE mm -hmm. that from June, the mm. system takes off. Right. It means, to my mind, that yes, we can step back. It means, to my mind, that they, we admit that there have been problems, mm. but we are going to resolve them. Mm. And once we resolve them, mm -hmm. we ought to be comfortable with what we have. Public policy, mm -hmm. like I said, mm -hmm. is not always smooth, simple, and easy. Public policy is that which everybody can look at to criticize, input, and otherwise. Mm -hmm. And yet, it has to be done. Mm -hmm. So now, if by June, mm -hmm. there is going to be full implementation, then I believe that whilst temporarily you have a setback, that system is one that the Customs Administration is committed to. And that's the system that will be in place at the right time. Okay, just so you want to have a final. Uh, well, no, I later. just think that uh, I'm not, I'm not totally. Com I accept now that the it's going to come in, but I do not think that many co uh, view uh, observers out there are convinced mm -hmm. about the reason for the change. Mm -hmm. And this initial problem that is coming, we hope mm -hmm. it's not going to point to a reduced uh, revenue. Uh, 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 yeah, to a problem about revenue collection in the future okay. because it was working and we are trying to fix something that was working to mm. work better. I see. Alex. So if we are not careful, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom, right. I'm just saying that the warnings have been given okay. and the first signs are showing. So it's incumbent upon government to get it right. But there are many who are still skeptical. And what is happening now mm -hmm. is giving reason for the skepticism. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. That GRE is a huge institution mm -hmm. in this country, mm -hmm. and GRE is an institution that rides also on its credibility. Therefore, for it to pursue a certain course of action, mm -hmm. I believe they have satisfied themselves that that is the right course of action. Is, is there pressure from government on them? I do not think there is pressure from government as a distinct entity from GRE. GRE is an institution that is part of the government. Mm -hmm. GRE has a mandate to deliver. Mm -hmm. GRE is performing on that mandate and can be assessed based on its delivery quality or otherwise. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, we have gone paperless. They believe that the best solution to enhancing, strengthening paperless mm -hmm. is to move to the Unipass system. Okay. And they have assured the public that they will do so by 1st June. Okay. I think we should give them the benefit of the doubt okay. and see what happens by 1st June. Okay. Let's read your thoughts. 020216666. Three, three. That's our WhatsApp line, and uh, I want to bring something that's not on, a, on in the papers, but a dangerous situation that's happening at uh, Gun North. It says a uh, new development started about six weeks ago, uh, but it stopped during the lockdown. Dur development gained acceleration after relaxing off the lockdown. The developers came back yesterday to continue with the fencing using iron rods and concrete after part of fax, uh, fences were broken down by Sunday's rainfall. You'll meet them tomorrow or anytime uh, we come around. This is someone who's sending us a message from the Ganoth and saying that the, uh, there's a river there. I'll share the name with you, but take a look at this short video. This is the Saki River. The water course of Saki River had been sold to people to build. This is a pillar indicating that somebody has bought this side. This is another pillar. Also an indication somebody has bought. And somebody has started fencing right inside the course of Insaki River. And it has rained today, Sunday, 26 April. And I'm sending this report to you for your immediate action. Thank you. Well, this is the Insaki River. People are building 
in the river. I don't know why the water wasn't there at the time the people were in the river, but we could link it to Galamse or whatever it is, drought, whatever you want to assign to it. But people are buying lands in the heart of the river. Now, the rains are coming, and this is why I want us to take the conversation from Cess. The rains are coming. We have heard the wager example, so many people buy lands in the dry season. It rains, and then they start crying out to government, not more, come to our aid, uh, give us compensation, blah, blah, blah. How long should we sit and watch while these things happen? Sir Alex? Well, as you said, it's a, it's, this is a, a national problem. Mm. And the way we buy and sell land and use land uh, across the country in areas which should not be built in mm. because of the waterways in which and the flow of water, the type of area it is, the type of soil that exists, mm -hmm. um, we continuously find a way to breach the rules. And I'm hoping that uh, the pillars that are there mm. are perhaps for some system to be put in place to enhance the flow of water and not for any other building purposes mm -hmm. because it is clearly a waterway and if that is what it is then no building except what is going to enhance the waterway mm -hmm. for example a very large gutter to help the water stay in a certain mm -hmm. in the same waterway right. uh, it, so without knowing the detail but I, i'm very first of all let me commend the gentleman who mm -hmm. sent in the video it puts government on notice mm -hmm. and the uh, local authority of the area should within the next or by latest this afternoon latest in the next 24 hours come and explain mm. what has happened whether the land has been sold mm. why it has been sold and if it it is for any structure mm -hmm. other than what would enhance the waterway then i think that it should be terminated immediately mm. we have enough problems we don't need another one wherever this is sir we have problems we don't need new ones Seriously, the indiscipline, perhaps informed by an inability to appreciate the differences between ownership of land mm -hmm. and the use of land, is costing us a great deal, mm -hmm. particularly in the areas where land has become a premium, in particular Greater Accra within the environs of the capital mm -hmm. and, and, and the Greater Kumasi area. Mm -hmm. Um, that you own land doesn't mean that you can convert it to any use mm -hmm. in particular uh, parcel it up and sell it for the, the erection of uh, habitation structures for people to live in mm -hmm. you can have land but it may not be suitable for certain kinds of uses mm -hmm. the question that probably we haven't tackled well and um, um, I think we are both public policy people who are involved in governments over the years in and out of authority and all that is that maybe we haven't really defined effectively the economic rights mm -hmm. associated with ownership of land. Mm -hmm. If we had been able to define, define clearly the easements, the rights of way and otherwise. Mm -hmm. In other words, if I own a river mm -hmm. <laughs> and public policy demands that the utility of it, that it stays as a river okay. because it's a drain right. Uh, for the rest of for the, the rest area, of the community. do I gain anything? It's an easement for the benefit of those who have built mm -hmm. houses. Do I gain anything by owning the river? Mm -hmm. If I don't, or I'm not pushed in a direction where I actually earn something, then I feel that, well, uh, let me also <laughs> pass it up to any adventurous, reckless or otherwise, who would want to try this mm -hmm. and give it out to them. Right. And, and then because the indiscipline is condoned, mm -hmm. you have a situation where people do that. And the next thing you know, there's a flood. There's criminal government. Mm -hmm. Rescue us. Give us this. Give us that. So you'll find that land development, in terms of settlement, is always ahead mm -hmm. of the true technical situation that ought to be there. Okay. Extension of utilities, uh, extension of uh, other infrastructure and otherwise. Mm -hmm. We must break the cycle. Okay. We how, must how, break do we, the chain. how do we break the cycle? I mean, we've yeah. been saying it over and over yeah. again. Yeah, it, it, it's a very, very major challenge. Mm -hmm. and, and I think what you've shown today, I mean, literally, 
a river, like you said, it's not Galamsi. Mm. This this looks like guitar <laughs> crash. It's not Galamsi. I'm using Galamsi in guitar. No, no, I'm, I'm I'm saying that mm, it was at, dry. At the time when they, yeah. yes, it was yeah, dry. I, that's I what I'm what that's what I'm following up on. That you made that after observation. Mm. It may have been dry mm. at the time it was parcelled right. out. But there have been seasons. Mm -hmm. So it is clear that if this time it rained and it was full, then last year, <laughs> in the rainy season, it right. would have been a river. And if they so, had their buildings there, they would be calling out to government. To, to government. So, so, so me. if last year, when it, it, the rainy season, it was a river and it dries up during the uh, dry season, you, you don't go in and cut it up after one dry season mm. and you purchase and move in there on the assumption that it won't rain again. But, but where they get permits, for example, and say, Alex, I'll ask the same question, from the local assemblies, whose duty it is to know their area and say this land is not for this purpose, like you're saying. Many, many people. The assemblies perhaps are sleeping on no, the job many or struggling people to stay get, awake. Many people get permits after the fact. Hmm. The, 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 we may have to streamline, if we're going to paperless, we may have to really streamline the, the issues. Who owns it? Who has authority to determine what can be used for? We have to streamline and strengthen those authorities because the, pay, the, the permit structure now, mm -hmm. you can start and then you, ap you apply. Mm -hmm. And then there was a loophole that if you applied in over a certain time, mm -hmm. you hadn't received it, mm -hmm. you were deemed to have, to have received it. it. Mm -hmm. And that is a major loophole because if bureaucratically and administratively the, the time passes by and it's not been processed, mm -hmm. Uh, then you are you are getting away literally with murder. Okay. You 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 achieve rights mm. that are virtually incontrovertible. Okay. But but we must strengthen it. Right. We must be strong on this because the more we go forward, we have the phenomenon now where more development is resulting in more flats. You know there are places in where I am, for example, mm. that never used to experience flats before, right. but are now experiencing flooding floods including people who have lived in those places for several years without those kinds of troubles mm. but somebody else comes in and develops a certain place further off and then all of a sudden you are at risk okay. and, and it's a disaster okay so so if we don't strengthen that part mm. of, of our administration mm. and get it right the economic rights associated with land ownership mm. and that all lands are valuable irrespective of what, where what, they what lie they are, they and, and that mm. their value depends on their user and that once you have land, whether it's a drain, it's a river, it's mm. a marsh, it's a bog, you will benefit from it because okay. it also performs an ecological function. Right. It's an integrated whole. It has a certain value. I get you. Thank you very much. So Alex, uh, I'll it on this one and then we'll move on. I just on. think that we have to really strengthen our registered land system. Mm. Uh, so if we do that, people will be reselling land, selling land you're not supposed to, to sell, etc. Mm. And what it's bottom line is that mm. it's a human endeavor. And it's corruption and fraud by at all levels, mm. from the land registry to people who own the land. Uh, and you cannot own a waterway or whatever. You, nobody necessarily owns it. It can be mm. in the middle of your land. Mm -hmm. and, but when you, the way you act with it mm -hmm. is subject to rules and regulations, which right. nobody seems to want to adhere to. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, there should also now be the move towards sanctions. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing that is missing from our body politic and from many things. Somebody knows somebody. Yes. Alex well, <laughs> so we, but we, if you don't have sanctions... Of course, Mr. Yabba, be someone. He's a big man in government. I mean, when you were chief of staff, I'm sure people would call and say... Alex is the big man. Yeah, you know. He's the big man. Somebody knows I'm somebody. I'm only big in size. But you, are the, you are the one who is supposed to marry the girl that we are both... Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, your messages are coming thick and fast. Bella will be reading them shortly. But let's look at one final thing on the front page of the Daily Graphic Address. Potential food insecurity NDPC urges government. The National Development Planning Commission is advocating urgent measures to address any potential food insecurity in the midst of COVID-19. In that regard, it has called for the establishment of efficient national, regional, and local storage facilities and distribution systems geared towards preventing food spoilage uh, of, and, and items of site. Um, they were contained in a number of recommendations submitted to the government recently, and the, the recommendations are there in the newspaper. Yeah, I'll start with you. The, over the weekend, there was a, a big troll of the uh, Greek minister following the plantain three to five cities uh, comments. Later, we we'll, we'll get to hear that those were 2018 figures that were being quoted at the time. Uh, Some were even asking, okay, so which other parts of the statement in red at the Meet the Press were from 2018? But that's beside the point. Now, 
the economic uh, agricultural activities which would have ordinarily been active at this point may not necessarily be there because of COVID. the fact that we are not in normal yeah. times yeah. and that will put us in a position as aptly put by the ndpc uh, in a position of jeopardy if we don't take care how do we ensure that we're feeding our people even in these times that we say are not normal and where demand for food is high because we're asking for people to stay at home the temptation to eat more is there how do we ensure that we have enough and our borders are closed, we are not bringing in a lot of... How do we, how do we solve this so we don't get here? Yes, fortunately, um, COVID-19, again, not being in normal times, gives us a certain perspective. You now have a local, uh, very vibrant manufacturing uh, arm in, mm -hmm. in stylish face masks mm -hmm. and, and as well as, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, PPEs mm -hmm. and other sanitizers and otherwise. We are still being fed at this time. Mm. This has brought up the whole notion of post-harvest losses. Mm. The figures we bandy about 40% of what we harvest is lost. Mm. Before COVID, you realize a certain concerted effort to modernize agriculture and turn it into a business mm. through 1D1F, where the idea is that most endowed districts mm -hmm. with raw produce are able to establish factories that will add value to the produce. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, for me, at this time of our life, mm -hmm. it is very painful that one has to go to the market and buy a tuber of yam that is literally being dug up from the ground and nothing done to it, including the sand from the farm, mm -hmm. all the way several hundreds of miles to Accra. Mm -hmm. And then you carry that sand to your house and have to uh, 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 peel it manually, mm -hmm. dice it up, and wait for it to cook before you can eat. <laughs> I, 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 I am sad. I, I Why think are you that sad? That's how we live. Yeah, but, but that is how we live then begs the question about how we prepare to live otherwise. Mm. So, so current investments, the current view of agriculture mm. uh, that the current minister is looking at is the investments that are going in there. Planting for food and jobs, mm. planting for rearing and jobs, planting for export mm. and all that. So these are uh, and rearing for export, the, mm. the yeah. animal side of oh. it, and then the cash crop side that has mm. been established. Mm. That's, that's more or less agriculture, but not necessarily export the eating part, the right. export. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so we must intensify investment but, but in with agriculture. But all of these in investments, mm. for the past two years, we have seen a sharp decline in the growth rate within the agricultural sector. So then the, the conversation is that if we are doing all these investments, and yet we, are, we keep declining, then we need to be looking at the Don't methodology. Forget we, are, we are investing in warehousing as well. Mm. We are investing in 80 warehouses across districts mm. where you have heavy raw materials coming out. Mm. So, so there is a plan and it is being implemented. Mm. The question is how fast and how quickly can we deploy knowledge in terms of preservation mm active preservation where we don't we have not gone to the radio uh, 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 what do you call that thing the radio thing that is used to preserve food oh uh, mm -hmm. radiology. yeah, uh, yeah. No. you have different forms of mm -hmm. food preservation mm -hmm. yes so so i think the challenge to us as a nation is to move beyond uh, the the harvesting of the raw thing and preserve what we harvest effectively mm -hmm either through value-added pr uh, processing or ways and means that keep it as it is mm. for as long as possible. It stabilizes farm gate prices, it stabilizes consumer prices, mm. and it gives assurance to the people involved in agriculture mm. that it is profitable to invest in agriculture. Because we have the seasonal swing as well. Right. You have the tomatoes, mm. everybody goes into tomatoes, the price plunges when everybody harvests, mm. and then when we lose it, then the prices rise. Mm. So, so you can't even get tomato to buy. So, so those are ups and downs that we must even out. And, and continued investment, mm. continued attention mm. will resolve that. So the concerns raised by NDPC, mm. yes. But then these are concerns that are literally being dealt with and battled mm. on a daily basis because we are aware of the issues. Okay. The, 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 the issue, okay. for example, of the dams that have dried up in the in the dry season and if the purpose of the dam is to ensure that irrigation is enhanced 
during the dry season for people to be able to water their crops and make sure that we have food all year round. Yeah. That's unacceptable because the purpose of the dam is to ensure that you have water when there's drought. Now the, the dams are dry, either dried up or washed away. We saw some agency and his team take us round and it, actually yeah. they were standing in the but, middle but, of, the, but, of the dam. But, but the Special Development Initiative Ministry tells us that they are involved in the construction of 570 dams okay. across that sector mm. of the country. A press conference at one dried up dam mm. doesn't represent the entire but her, policy. her own statement that the money she got mm. is the quality of the dam she's giving us raises concerns. Yes, but I'm saying that. That's why I'm saying public policy is easier to stand back and say deja vu. This, this, this is the woman so implementing. Exactly, speaking. but I'm saying that the woman didn't say all her 570 dams delivered in progress about to be commissioned mm. are the way that particular one was okay that's what i'm saying that single dam is not representative mm. of the entire effort to deliver water as much as possible all year round for farming and animal husbandry activities because some of those dams are also meant for drinking for animals mm. not just for irrigation okay. so in that sense the design and the construction may not necessarily look like one where the water is supposed mm. to be flowed out to a, a field, farm, yeah. but it's, it's designed to catch enough water mm. for animals to drink. But, 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 the, but then period. the promise was one district, one factory. Oh and no. it does appear that the it concentration is, is up, 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 north, up north. The, the concentration of these dams are just up north. So, for example, if I live at Offenso and we have water challenges, I'm not getting a dam and <laughs> I, have, I, I live in a village. No, I, I think, I how, think, how do we actualize this dream no, nationalistically? I, 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 I think that realistically, Ghanaian as we are, we know the potential for the North being mm. the breadbasket of this country. But we also know that it has only one season. And that single season deprives us, the entire rest of the country, of certain benefits from there. There are certain crops that will do very well. Okay. So the idea is to get the North mm. going under this initiative. Mm. Once you get it going effectively, other parts of the country which require those things. For example, you can't be looking at dams on the southern coast. Mm. You are looking at making fishing okay. more efficient. So okay. you have landing sites mm. with... Uh, uh, fish processing plants, ice plants, and all that. Okay. So the, let, it, let, it let's is focused there. Grateful. Because that's where we get the most value. Grateful. Let's go to Bella and then I'll come to you, Sir Alex, on, on this one. Bella, welcome back. Well, thank you. And what's so, happening or what's up? Well, people are speaking. So, this one is from Teacher Constitution in Weemuase. I can see that Ghana is battling with two serious problems now. These problems are COVID 19 and the NDC. We should all turn a deaf ear to the NDC, else, coronavirus will kill us all. If the NDC wants to come to power again, then they should find Ghanaians a vaccine which can cure, uh, well, you mean prevent corona. Uh, Okay, coronavirus. Good morning, Johnny. Please ask Mr. Yabwabing as someone why the MPP has suddenly become a hub for honorable liars. Example, oh. there are Greek ministers, oh. three Ghana cities plantain comment, the Minister of Health's UG hospital generator comment, and honorable Eslo, who's his floating bridge comment. This is Nanaya Wager. Anyway, TV3 is the best amongst the rest. Thank you. Good morning, Senior Johnny. This is what happens when we focus on winning an election instead of putting um, our pragmatic steps to curb the pandemic. To be frank, it will not be easy for us. Government should use the funds meant for it to fight it seriously. Government should also provide free nose masks and sanitizers for the people. And mm. above all, we have to repent uh, from our sins. Okay, from Osman Bukurisung in Tamale. Johnny, the GC Net and Unipass issue is just about the usual. Let's get them out and bring in um, own behavior of anti-nationalistic politicians. Okay, from Frank the Jew. Walanyo and Akwetia says, Johnny, you see how uh, with a twinkle of an eye, human beings can be disfigured. I can't recognize you and your panelists uh, in your nose mask, but we hope that one day it will be history Absolutely. to be told. Mm. <clears throat> Mustafa Loa Mayanya Krobo says that, may God bless our able health workers and technocrats during this pandemic, but we shouldn't forget malaria, uh, cholera, and cerebrospinal meningitis. Let's stay home and stay safe. My regards to Honorable Telabi and JM, Mustafa Loa Mayanya Krobo. Good morning, Johnny. Please allow me to use your medium to plead with the government to release funds to pay us field officers for the 2018 Agric Centers. Mm. Some of us did not get the opportunity of enjoying any relief from the government 
during these difficult times. Now, these allowances can at least serve as seed money for some of us to start some business, however small. Wanya she, wanya she ama, okay. Wasa, wasa, wanya she ama wasa. If you get nothing for your for your uh, in-law, you don't steal from them. Oh, so this is Wasia. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Good morning, TV3. I'm Lawrence. Johnny, please do let people know in my area. Well, do people in my area... Okay. Please, do do you know people are in my area telling me that the, theirs is not COVID-19? Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's no COVID-19 in Ghana. He said the government is just trying to take money from the philanthropist and we have some mm -hmm. that they can use for their political needs okay tv3 save us from these people by educating them for us i'm in accra new town we've been talking about this we also have a show dedicated to coronavirus every weekday from uh, 10 a.m to 11 30 so make sure that you watch it good morning johnny please tell the president and the npp that constructing 88 hospitals within seven months is not possible they should redirect their resources to complete existing ones greetings to mr alex Segbefia. this is gideon from ashaman <laughs> Charles Nyame Asamankesi says, in fact, government ha government's handling of the COVID-19 menace thus far is very poor. It has been all about PR gimmicks while the cases and deaths keep increasing. We're not angry enough as citizens at all. Good morning to Honorable Michael Eduse of Lower West Akim uh, constituency. Abbas Amogobo from Ofenso says, it's amazing some of us still fall victim to the lies of government. Talk, 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 but nothing to show. God allowed this government into power to expose them to the world. Why should Ghana record 1,671 cases? COVID-19 is exposing the weakness and the incompetence of this government. Hmm. Good morning, TV3. Why is it that some of the PPEs that are to be given to health centers are branded in photographs with photographs of some MPs and ministers before distribution? Some government appointees have also started the business of selling PPEs recently. Hmm. Are these PPEs supposed to be sold or given for free? Jonas from the Volta region. Good morning, Johnny. Ask the NPP man if what he's saying is realistic. Do we want revenue for development or just introducing Unipass? Every rational uh, man or government will go for profits. December 7th is just around the corner. Good morning, TV3. In fact, you guys are doing a great job for updating the general public in the, in the wake of COVID-19. But I think you should advise our politicians to stop equalization of of misusing the taxpayers' money and equip the health sector as well as resource the education sector. It's impossible to build 88 hospitals within eight months. Let's be frank. Are we having the money to undertake these projects, uh, pardon me, uh, without borrowing from the developing countries, from the developed countries, from Moses Villa inside Yerikoi, Savannah region? And finally, good morning, TV3. Operationalizing the NADMO Act will surely curb some activities, but government is failing to do the needed. Mr. Kuma from Accra. Okay, well, the NADMO Act, as I understand, is uh, being developed. But, Sir Alex, your thoughts about the food security issues? The first question that comes to mind, and if it's accurate that it was said, why were 2018 figures being talked about in 2020 by the health, the agreed minister? You blame his speechwriter. Well, then. There should be some query or, or sanction because it's actually becoming uh, a difficulty for this government. Mm -hmm. Let me be quite honest. They have to start saying what they mean mm -hmm. and mean what they say. And what do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. If my brother here is having to explain an issue, or every time somebody speaks, people have to come and explain, or say somebody didn't speak right, mm -hmm. the time I think is misspoke. Mm. etc it means that the act of communicating is becoming a problem because we keep having to explain issues you come out and tell everybody for example that this plantain is uh, three three a to bunch five of cities even when you are saying it if you are a person on the on the ground you know that it's not true so you should have already been checking or oh, are you sure because it's it's just it was so <laughs> it was so absurd excuse me to say mm. that nobody wore it no every and it's not about politics the media social commentators everybody saw that this cannot be right mm. so it begs the question whether our colleague the the, the minister of Agri had actually done any in-depth questioning himself of what had been put in front of him 
before coming to announce it, amongst other issues. And I find that uh, even with the COVID issue, mm. something is said, and then the next day it has to be explained because it didn't come across the way uh, or it appears to the, to, to, to the people who are listening to it mm. that there's an issue. Now, somebody could say that, look, it's common. Yes, there are issues. There's always a time where somebody can misinterpret or even people will be mischievous and put a spin but on it. But you're saying it's one too many. Exactly. The incidents. The, the, the incidents are just becoming where, numerous. Where they you, are. You, 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 you understand? And it is, it is actually affecting the credibility of the I information that is coming out to us. So. Uh, oh yes, I mean, I this is my observation. Th is and I, I expect that you would say different. But I'm saying, when you constantly have to you're talking about uh, food security mm. and the national development plan. The national development plan is not a creature of any political party. Right. They are giving us a warning mm. and saying there might be an issue. Check this, check that. That in itself should sell us that. The narrative, perhaps, that government is putting out is not what the National Development Commission mm. is saying is, is, is happening. And that we are on a decline. The, this thing has come out that has also declined yeah. twice so, in a row it, it, exactly so w this upbeat uh, narrative which the minister always puts out when he speaks on agri and then he has to be checked on certain things that he has said it's not the first time that the minister of agri has said something that has raised eyebrows for lami worm is coming back uh, well, anyway <laughs> so i'm clear that the communication it's not being checked or checked properly. And I'm clear that a lot of the narrative that is coming with regard to agri mm -hmm. is not necessarily agri accurate. And it's not us saying it. It is in government institutions. What, what do you see to be the, the problem? Is it that the minister is not on the ground, which I get from you, or that the communication is not put right, or that reality is just not hitting the ministry, for example? That's why I say you should say what you mean and mean what you say you must do your checks and there's a problem in the agri sector mm. and you have uh, what i'll say pluses things that have been achieved and it is good to deal with them but if the negatives are beginning to affect certain aspects of agri then you should be aware of them and address them and give us a clearer fuller picture if not somebody will do it for you as has been done by the Okay, thank you. A time, a time is coming. Doctor, you somebody you know is very diligent. Mm. Yeah, deserves the benefit of that. Mm. Let's see going forward what it comes at, up. A time is up. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Alex Segofia is a member of the NDC's um, COVID-19 team. He is also uh, a former Minister for Health. He is also the head of the International Relations uh, Department of the NDC. Thank you very much sir, for your time. He's a legal practitioner also, by the way. And lawyer Yabuabia Samoa's MP for the Adentan constituency uh, is hoping for his primaries, I'm sure. Are you, are you prepared? <laughs> Are you prepared for this? You have to talk about primaries. Are you, are, you, are you prepared for I believe so. Are prepared? I believe so. Okay. Yeah, so, so he's, he's, losing, he's losing weight. <laughs> <laughs> he's the director of uh, communications of the NPP. And um, it, listen, the fact that you've been let out doesn't mean that COVID is not around anymore. The virus is out there, so you need to be safe. You need to wash your hands regularly with soap and uh, and the running water, you need to eat healthy, you need to use your alcohol-based sanitizers, maintain social distance, and keep safe. The virus is out there, and the difficulty Where and the I? enemy is not anybody else. It is the virus, and the enemy is also our attitude. In these times, your discipline is what will save all of you.